Welcome to the Swag Zone, a show that's dedicated to the ins, the outs, the ups, and the downs of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. If it's good, we'll talk about it. If it's bad, we'll talk about it. If it's happening, we'll talk about it. The Swag Zone, only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Let us join this week's episode. It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another Swag Zone I have on the line with me. The guru himself, the man with the plan, none other than Coach Van Pettaway. How you doing today, Coach? I'm doing fine, Doc. Everything's all everything is well and we're just happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you on board with us as well, sir. A uh, big weekend for both of our squads, but I think we're kinda of more in that desperado mode than you guys are. But we'll recap all that as we look forward to this weekend that lies ahead. Oh yes, oh yes! It's another great week of slack basketball, and uh, we we I don't think we had any big surprises this past week. Um, so uh, I think everything went a- according to plan. And with that being said, we'll start on the women's side, uh, and we'll start down in Jackson, Mississippi, where Jackson State played host to uh, Alcorn State, and Jackson State women dominated that game, and they won eighty-one to forty-nine. And then uh, down at Gramlin, Louisiana, Gramlin played host to Southern, and Southern women came in, came in there and took one from the Tigers. They won Southern won that game 54 to 50. And then uh, down in Montgomery, Alabama, Alabama State played host to Florida A&M. Alabama State won that game 65 to 54, and out in Houston, Texas Southern hosted Mississippi Valley, and the Tigers got up off the ground and beat them now 72 to 36. Uh, big, big, big win for Texas Southern. And then, of course, uh, my lady Bulldogs played host to Bethune Cookman, and in a thriller, they won the game 50 to 48. It went down to the last shot of the game. Uh, to decide that one, but nevertheless, the Lady Bulldogs came out 50 to 48. And then at Prairie View, uh, your Panthers, uh, Coach Pugh, they played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they won that game 78 to 60, uh, 78 to 68. So that that ended all the action on Mon on uh, Saturday, and then that led us to Monday, where um, Texas Southern played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff won that game 83-53. to uh, Alabama State played host to uh, Bethune-Cookman. They won that game 74-71. to And then uh, My Lady Bulldogs played host to Florida A&M, and they won that game 77-65 to uh, in front of a nice crowd. And then Your Lady Panthers, they hosted Mississippi Valley, and your Panthers won that game 72 to 51. And that put everything into perspective. This is a big weekend coming up. The uh the conference standings uh they look like this. Jackson State who has won 10 in a row, a 13 and 1 in first place. Alabama State who has won 4 in a row, a uh, 5 in a row, are uh, 11 and 4 along with my Lady Bulldogs 11 and 4. They've won 2 in a row. And then your Prairie View Panthers are in a good spot. They're ten and five, and Southern nine and five, Bethune Cookman nine and six. Well, this weekend the rubber meets the road because the two second place, the second two teams that are tied for second place, they have to play each other. That's Alabama State and Alabama A and M on the women's side. So it looks like the race is uh is going to come down to the who is going to get that number two seed? And then your Panthers are trying to improve their position so that they can get away from Southern because if if, if things were to start off right now, uh, Prairie View and Southern would be playing uh, in that opening game. Okay, and Coach, I get confused on the seeding brackets. Is it one, three, five, seven, and then two, four, six, eight? Well, how do they put those brackets together? Well, one, one plays eight, two plays seven, uh, three goes to uh, 
Wait a minute, I just six, three, three goes three to six. Goes six, right, and then four plays five, yes. Okay, yes. so, okay, very good. I have to remember, I get confused with that every time. And then with the unbalanced schedule, at least I'm calling it an unbalanced schedule because you only play certain teams once Correct. versus playing other teams twice. Do you think there's going to be room for um, adding the additional two games where you get those other two teams in, or do you think they're going to keep it at the 18 games? Well, I think eventually they're gonna, I, they should go go to round robin, go back to round robin. Uh, I, I think on the men's side, they have left like like it is with which where you only play once uh, on the other side, so that they can get more guarantee games in. But I think if they see uh, the need for us uh, having a more balanced conference, we'll go back to round robin. I'm hoping that's what they do in the future. Well, wouldn't that even possibly eliminate some isms, skibbles when it comes to the finalizations right. of those things? Right, right, because it, it would be even Stevens. Everybody plays everybody twice. Because right now with you only playing some teams one time, you know, if you're not fortunate enough to have it on your home court, that could really go against you. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay. Yeah. So, so the it, it, things are things are uh, uh, be a little clearer on the women's side uh, after Saturday night, after Alabama A and M and uh, Alabama State play to find out who is the real number number two. And on the men's side, uh, last Saturday down in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson played host to Alcorn. Alcorn showed their dominance by winning that game 75 to 60. And down at uh, Gramlin, Louisiana, uh, I'm sorry, Gramlin and and uh, and te- and Southern had their game out in Utah, uh, and that was a very interesting game. Went to overtime. Gramlin won that game 69 to 64. As part of the NBA All Star Weekend. I think that's great for HBCUs, and uh, it was well attended. And then out in Houston, uh, Texas Southern played host to uh, Mississippi Valley. Texas Southern won that game 80-62. to And I, I think that noise that we hear is Texas Southern cranking it up <laughs> as, as they're getting closer. And down in Montgomery, Alabama State played host to Florida A&M. Alabama State lost that game. Florida and them went on the road and beat them 60 to 54. And then here in Huntsville, uh, Saturday night, my Bulldogs took care of Bethune Cookman 90 to 56. I wish they had left a few of those points on the board. <laughs> uh, and then uh, out at Prairie View, uh, your Panthers played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they won that game 82 to 71. And that led us to last night where the scores look like this. Texas Southern played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they Texas Southern won that game 64-59. to uh, Bethune-Cookman uh, went into Montgomery and beat Alabama State 70-65. to And if there was an upset this weekend, here it is, uh, uh, last night, rather, uh, Florida and them came into Huntsville and beat um, – Alabama and them 77 to 71, and then of course your Panthers played host to Mississippi Valley in a very tight ball game. They won that game 67 to 65, and yes, that uh, that was a game. That was it, a game. It, it was a game, coach, and not taking anything away from Valley because they did bring their A game, their A plus game. But well, if you could make this game way closer than what it should have been, from my opinion, of course I'm a Panther fan. Uh, free throws killed the Panthers on Monday night. They could not. They I know they left at least fourteen points on the floor by not getting wow. free throws. Yes, well, sir. well, now that if you think that was something in the second half alone, Alabama A and M was fourteen out of twenty eight from the free throw line. Wow, fourteen 50%. out of twenty eight. Yep. Mm, yep. Mm, yep. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's a struggle, Coach. Even it's hard for good teams to win on nights like that. Oh, yes. But it happens. It happens. I guess it's just human error in place. But don't like it when it's your squad involved. Right? Oh, that's true. That's true. 
And so after last night's play, uh, the outstandings on the men's side look like this. Alcorn State has won six in a row, and they're standing there in first place at 12-2. and two. In second place is Gramlin at 11-3. and three. They've won five in a row. And then uh, Southern is on a two-game losing streak, but they're at 9-5 and five in third place. Jackson State is at 8-6 and six in fourth. Alabama A&M is 8-7 and seven in fifth place. And then here comes Texas Southern and Prairie View, both at 7-8. and eight. Uh, They're bringing, it, bringing up that four, five, and six spot. It is going to be a race coming down. And let me tell you what I would not want to do. I would not want to see Prairie View or Texas Southern down the stretch because they both have that winning DNA on their teams. They're both used to winning and coming down the stretch. I think they'll be able to bank off of some of that. And they're well, both, you hope so. <laughs> they're both trending in the right direction. Oh, yeah, um, now that's true. One, they're one in, they've, they've won three in a row, and your Panthers have won two in a row. So they're mm-hmm. doing it at the right time. Yes, sir. Well, I can tell you this. They have that Mississippi trip, all coin in Jackson State, and not discrediting Texas Southern nor Prairie View. I can't see them getting uh, these streets to continue on when they meet that buzzsaw, also known as the Braves, at the reservation. So I'm not tossing it in, Coach, but I'm being realistic uh, from a Panthers fan's point of view. If I can get a split on Mississippi yep, yep, yep. and come back and take care of Texas Southern, that would give me a 9-9 nine and nine conference record, which would probably be good enough for that number six spot. Right. And I I, I, I'll take my chances on playing number three. Right now, if we were to go right now, I believe Purdue you can find a way to beat Southern on a neutral uh, uh, setting uh, with them being a number three and Purdue coming in at number six. Right. Like I said, I'm one in Southern, but I like my chances against Southern if that were the case. Right, right, because he's, uh, Southern's trending in the wrong direction. They've lost two in a row. So this might be a good time to jump on them. So we'll yes, see this, this, this week. Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting week. And as we look at, at, at the schedule, uh, the upcoming schedule, we, we, we're going to have some good matchups. And like I said, on the women's side, it starts in Montgomery where uh, Alabama A&M and Alabama State will determine who is who will be uh, that number two seed uh, on the women's side. And then, of course, your Panthers have a very tough contest. They got all corn first. They go on the reservation, so that's going to be tough. And then, of course, uh, Texas Southern has to go to Jackson State. Uh, so the Mississippi trip will be a big one for the Texas schools. So I'm looking forward to next week, and, and we'll just see how the, where the chips fall. Well, we're going to see where they fall, Coach, and um, I'm liking the position of both of them, to be quite honest with you, because at one point, especially from the men's division, it looked like, man, we were walking in the dark with no type of lighting at all. Yeah. But now we're finally you know, getting the engines and the pistons pumping and, and flowing in the right direction. So when, when you look at all this, and, of course, everybody's, you know, watching, bubble watch, and March Madness cranking up, can you feel it turning up right now, Coach? Oh, yeah. It, it, you can tell it, it, it's cranking up. It's, it's close to uh, tournament time, and, uh, w- w- you know, it's, it, it's going to be tested. And w- when you look ahead at the schedule, Alcorn has to go to Pine. They finished the season at Pine Bluff. That could determine the conference championship on the men's side because that Pine Bluffs is probably the only team that has a shot at beating Alcorn State away mm. from home I, because I, I just don't think that they're going to lose. I do not think Alcorn will lose on the reservation. Okay. I, think, I, I think because of uh, logistics, They have a distinct advantage when they play down there. And I just think that the two Texas schools are in trouble as far as the reservation this weekend. And when you look ahead, the only outside chance, uh, if Bramlin can hold hold court, they have an opportunity to uh, to tie 
uh, Alcorn State with them losing to Arkansas Pine Bluff because Pine Bluff, they do have the personnel uh, that can get it done. You know, I don't know if, if, if Alcorn will be, uh, if they'll see the light at the end of the tunnel and say there's nothing going to stop them, that would be the only way that they can, they can uh, secure that title. But it's going to well, come how, down to the last week. How about this scenario, Coach? How about my Panthers? They go in and they beat Alcorn. Oh. And then Alcorn has to play Pine Bluff, the final game of the regular season, to determine the winner and let them fight that out on that side. Oh, yeah, that is true now. That, is true. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great for, for the for SWAC basketball. But well, we I know it sounds see. like wishful thinking, but like you say, we shall see. And, yeah. and, and I'm going to keep, well, I guess purple and gold is going to always be supreme in that particular matchup. But I'm going to root for the right purple and gold with that Black Panther on the side of the, in, in the chest area. So it, it, it's truly, truly exciting, Coach, and I know this is when you get into the thick of the things. Now, I know coaching is in your DNA. That will never stop. Do you find yourself coaching when you're analyzing games? All the time. You, 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 <laughs> all the time. It, it, it just it, it, it happens. It happens. You, you're sitting up there and you see something. Uh, uh, about to happen, and then you try to make the adjustment as a coach instead of just being a, an, an analyst. Yeah, that, that uh -huh. happens. Yeah, that uh -huh. happens. Well, I, you know, I also wanted to ask this question. Now, you get uh, your timeouts, and I know your timeouts toward the end of the game are critical, but that's not the same approach toward the end of the half using timeouts, is it? Well, no. A lot of people nowadays, everybody, you have one 30-second timeout that you're going to lose whether you take it or not. So right. a lot of the coaches try to take advantage of it and go ahead and set up a play or some type of strategy toward the end of the half. So they, they'll go ahead and call that one. But now for okay. me, I, okay, I, I've always been this way. I want you to have to call a timeout to stop my team, to break mm -hmm. my momentum. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to call as many timeouts. I save them for the end of the game. And when we had that 30-second lose it or, 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 or take it, there were plenty of games where I just lost mine. Right, Because, right. because I, 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 didn't, I, I just don't like doing that. I just didn't like doing that. And, and they, to me, your timeouts are more valuable at the end of the game. So as long as I'm taking them at the end of the game, then that means that I'm still in the game. Right, right. Yeah. Well, there was an interesting scenario uh, with the uh, Prairie View game against Mississippi Valley, uh, they had a stoppage in play with about 4 minutes, 24 seconds. You know, that TV timeout at 4 minutes. Well, they were playing so hard, Coach, that you didn't get the 4-minute break to like 2 minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the game. Wow. And that was pretty rare. I hadn't seen that quite often. You could see maybe 40, 50 seconds off into it, but this thing went almost over 2 minutes before they were able to get that TV timeout. Now, when you do that TV timeout, it does not change um, timeout situation. You just happen to take it late, right? Correct, correct, correct. That, see, when, once you get that dead ball, neither team loses a timeout. That, that, those timeouts are automatically built in. Okay, very so, good. So, so you, you, you retain your timeouts. As long as you don't make the call, let, let, once there's a dead ball at the, at those uh, uh, points in the game, that's an automatic timeout, and you and, get, and they're and they're extended too. Right, you know, they're, they're, they're normally uh, a little longer. And no, another unique circumstance happened on the women's side um, because their breaks are at the five minute mark. Correct, and in the fourth period. It was a free throw attempt. The free throw was missed. Valley has it on the rebound. And they're fast breaking. The officials stopped the play and said it was time for a media timeout. Oh, no, that should not have happened. That should not have happened. They, 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 should, have, they should have allowed that play to, to uh, play out. If they yeah. missed it, they, they, they should not take an advantage away from either team. Right. Well, I know Valley was in an uproar yeah. with that call. Uh, 
Not that it would have made a difference. Let me put that side note in there. But, you know, it is what it is. Fair is fair. But I, I found it strange, and I couldn't recall ever seeing a situation like that, which made me question about these timeouts at all. And as is always, the guru comes through. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, Coach, look, there's a big weekend ahead. Um, your Bulldogs are, are, are taking care of business. My Panthers are trying to get where you are. And uh, that means we're getting closer to tournament time, too, sir, March 8th through 11th. And can't wait to get those things off the ground. Uh, Want to give you some closing thoughts and comments as we can really wrap this week's segment up, sir. Well, uh, Dr. Prince, we've had a great year so far. Let's finish strong. Let's continue. I would love for you to continue doing what you're doing, getting the message out because it's sorely needed, and uh, just do what he has put on your mind to do, and I think everything will take care of itself. Yes, sir, indeed it will. And you know what, Coach? I almost let you get away, man. There's a little baseball tidbit that will have you and I both interested. Okay. The Andre Dawson Classic, which will feature your beloved Bulldog against my beloved Panthers from New Orleans, Louisiana. Wow. Now, I don't want to kick up any dust or anything, Coach, and I've never been one to buy wolf tickets, nor do I sell them. Sell them. But um, I think we'll have a pretty different song to sing when we get together next week. Oh, well, we will, we will, we will, we will. Because we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, cause we have to support our respective schools. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And we know, we know that if this was a real-life scenario, a bulldog can't touch a panther. But we won't get into that. We, we, we won't get into that part. <laughs> oh, Coach, we definitely appreciate you, my man. Enjoy the rest of your week, your weekend. Uh, go Bulldogs, go Panther, go Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yep. He is the guru. Coach Van Petterway, I'm the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you guys as always for joining in with us. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Visit the website, obnradio.com. And if you have one of those smart devices, say, hey, play the latest episode of the Mike Prince Show, and you'll be brought up to speed. So until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side. What's going on, y'all? It's your girl, JJ. Welcome to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I got one of PV greats on the line with me right now, um, Diana Rosenthal. What's up, D? How's it going, JJ? Man, I just wanted to get you on the radio so the people could hear your voice and know what you got going, what you got going, with you, going on with yourself right now. Uh, you know, I had a class day today, uh, had an exam, so we're getting ready to get back on the road. We got Jackson State and Alcorn this weekend. How you feeling about uh, this home stretch before, you know, entering SWAC tournament? Oh, uh, well, you know, it's three games left, and that's, you know, we're in the part of the season where your body starts aching, fatigue starts kicking in. So, you know, just make sure you're pushing yourself, get that extra work in, and make sure recovery, recovery, recovery. It's very important. Have you been getting a lot of recovery in? Yes. I make sure I go to rehab and treatment and rest my legs, everything I need to do. So you said today you in class. So give us a what a day-to-day -day recovery day will look like for Diana. So after class, my Tuesdays and Thursdays are typically my short days. So after class, I'll go get some rehab or some treatment, which takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I will go get some lunch from the MSC, and then I'll, you know, make sure I go home, get a couple study study sessions in, and uh, maybe get on the game for a while and just, you know, relax, do what's best to relax my mind. I might watch some basketball games, you know, whatever to help me relax. Okay. Now, how much time do you actually put into your craft? How much extra time do you spend in the gym? Are you working on your shot, putting up free throws uh, outside of basketball practice? So I try to get at least a 45-minute workout for myself or one of the coaches may work me out. Um, if I'm by myself, I, you know, maybe 30 minutes, I put some shots up, some ball handling and uh, whatnot. But I try to, you know, Tuesdays are normally our off days, so I try to take Tuesdays, recover, and then the rest of the week I just, you know, try to go put in some work.
Wednesday, Thursday, and, you know, Friday are travel days. So, Okay. Now, going into this last stretch, I know I mentioned, um, you know, this three-game swing that you guys got coming up. But it's pretty much SWAC time. Now, how important is, is actual SWAC tournament play for you? As well as the program, are you guys giving it any? Have you guys given it any thought? Have you mentioned it to the girls, and have you uh, guys like raised your expectations and things of that nature um, for this last wing of the SWAC? Absolutely. So these last three games are very important. We have Alcorn, which is a they're a good team. You know they're very scrappy. They play very uh, good defense, and then we have Jackson State, who is number one in the conference. So this weekend is a really big weekend for us, and we want to go, you know, 2-0 and now that we're, like you said, on this back stretch. We're, we want to stay in those top four spots. Uh, mm-hmm. for back. Right now we are in fourth, so we need to hold it. And yep. Uh, yep. just very strong. I now think everybody is the expectation that we have. Coach Q makes it an effort to tell us, like, this is it, you know. It's, it's, so you guys it. are pretty much looking to hold in, hold uh, lock in that fourth position to go into the tournament. Absolutely. I, I get that. I understand. Now, what type of mindset do you personally have? Because you've been here uh, four years. This is your fourth year. So what type of mentality do you have to have um, for the actual SWAC tournament? You know, that you got to win or go home mentality. So uh, how do you feel about that? And what type of mentality do you tap into when it comes to the actual tournament? Well, for me, this is my senior year. I've been at PV for four years, and I've only been to the SWAT tournament one time. So this year is really an all-or-nothing year for me. Um, you know, I feel like I've been being pretty consistent as far as my play, but now it's time to turn it up a notch as we're going into the tournament. Like I said, everybody wants to win, so you have to do everything that it takes to be better than the next person that's, you know, going to be there. So you're going to put the girls on your back. you got to do whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard that. Well, I appreciate you for giving us some time. Any closing um, remarks, any words, anything you want the fans and people to know about you or anything, and let us know what you got going and what you got going for uh, in the future because, again, this is your senior year. Uh, well, you know, I just want to say I appreciate all the fans who do come to the game, all the alumni that come to the game and support you know, there's a lot of people who's been knowing me since my freshman year, so it's an amazing experience for them to watch me grow. Um, you know, for the future, I just, I'm looking to get my master's, um, you know, and potentially uh, continue my basketball career as, as long as I can. I like that. So are you looking to uh, pursue a professional career? Oh, it's it's in the looks. I'm not sure. Basketball, you know, but I, I would love the opportunity if it was presented. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's your plan B if the ball stops bouncing? Uh, what you majoring I, in? What you want to do? I am a biology major with a minor in chemistry, so I'm looking to potentially be a microbiologist researcher uh, okay. or something in public health. So if anybody knows anyone, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Plug our girl in, right? Dee Rosenthal. That's funny, man. I'm I'm uh, a part of your journey. Uh, bring you in as a freshman. You was my little baby. That's my daughter, y'all. If y'all don't know, if y'all ever hear me say that's my daughter, <laughs> my right. daughter, man. She always wanted to be all up under me in practice and so If I had a ball here, she in front of me trying to guard me. She always wanted me to give her a bucket, y'all. So, uh, you know, I just want to throw it out there that Diana couldn't stop me like she's stopping the rest of these kids in the swag. Oh, <laughs> I'm washed up now, D. I I got to stop talking. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I still got it, man. I might have to come up there and get you guys some buckets every now and then. I'm I'm um recovering from ACL. That's why I haven't been up there to hoop with you guys in a while. But, you know, I'm I'm getting back. I'm going to come up there with you guys. Okay, and make sure you bring Mo. <laughs> Mo, she calling you out, Mo. <laughs> she calling you out. I definitely will bring Mo. I'm going to come with my whole squad. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but all right, D, thank you for call, um, coming online on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It was a pleasure to have you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, hello, everyone. It's me, Donna G, with DG Sports and Entertainment, coming to you on the MIC. Um, 
Hey, it's been a fun, filled, adventurous, sports filled weekend and week. <clears throat> so uh, let's get into it. I want to start off, of course, by giving you the SWAC standing for men's basketball. Again, that's the men's basketball SWAC standing for this week. Uh, Alcorn is still leading the pack with 12-2 record. Grambling, 11-3. Southern, 9-5. Jackson, 8-6. For now, Alabama, 8-7. Uh, set, uh, Texas Southern is seven to eight. Prairie View seven to eight. Arkansas Pine Bluff six to nine. Bethune Cookman six to nine, as well as Alabama State six to nine. Florida A and M is leading, is coming in second to last at five to ten. And lastly is Mississippi Valley State with three to twelve. Okay, well we got a few more games to play, but. We definitely want to, again, wish everybody uh, good luck. <clears throat> um, I want to, what do I want to do? I want to tell you guys about uh, the indoor uh, SWAC championship that was held on Friday. And, and let me make sure it was Saturday as well. But um, from my understanding, was that Jackson State took away a lot of uh, awards and titles. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me change that. Alabama State wins the SWAC Indoor Track and Field Championship title, the men's track. Um, let's see. So let me take that back. I think Friday when we were looking at it, Jackson State was uh, winning a lot, but it looks like the men's uh, track for Alabama State takes the title. So that's awesome news. Let's uh, say a great congratulations to those guys. Very excited. Uh, so uh, after that, or in the middle of it, or before and after, like I said, so much going on uh, this past weekend <clears throat> and weekend sports is in the sweat. We also had the uh, HBCU Classic presented by Cactus Jack Foundation, the Foundation for Travis Scott. Uh, we know he has very close ties to Prairie View and to Gremlin. So it was a pleasure to uh, support the foundation as well as the sweat schools that played in the tournament. So let's get started. Day one was Prairie View and Gremlin. PB wins 7 to 5. After that was CSU and Valley. Valley won seven to three. Uh, last game of the day on Friday was JSU and Southern. Southern wins five to four. Next day, Saturday, February the 18th, games were Valley and JSU. JSU wins 14 to one. Uh, after that was Southern and Grambling. Southern wins four to three. CB TSU rounds out the last game on Saturday evening, and TSU wins eight to four. Last day was Sunday, February the nineteenth, and the lineup is Gremlin versus Valley. Gremlin wins fourteen to four. TSU versus PV. TSU wins eight to three, and TSU versus Southern. Southern wins eleven to one. Uh, not only did they win that last game, but Southern also took home the tourney um, award. So they won the award uh, for the HBCU Classic this past weekend in baseball. <clears throat> now, while they were playing baseball, Southern and Gremlin uh, were playing basketball in Utah. They went head to head on at the NBA HBCU Classic during the All Star Weekend uh, Saturday in Utah. So uh, it was a very exciting game. Um, I mean, one just to be there at the All Star Weekend, and then you're representing your HBCU amongst all these professional players. And they had a great, very competitive game. Uh, but Gremlin topped Southern with a score of 69 to 64. 
So great job, guys. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to more exhibition games like that so that the world can really see what uh, HBCU have been doing. It's in general, but definitely in the sports arena. All right. So uh, that was Saturday. This past Monday was the HBCU Combine uh, for the NFL. It was Monday, February the 20th, held in Metairie, Louisiana. It was broadcasted on the NFL Network. So if you missed that, you might want to go back and see some of these great HBCU athletes uh, get measured and compete for top spots in the NFL. Okay, so keep going. We're keeping it moving. We're uh, coming up on the HBCU Legacy Bowl this coming Saturday in New Orleans. And so that is the 25th, Saturday, February the 25th, in New Orleans at 3 p.m. CST. So check your local listings as well as HBCULegacyBowl.com for more information. I know that's going to be awesome. All right, our next, everything is HBCU. So, uh, again, hopefully these HBCUs are capitalizing on this moment. Uh, not to say that it will be gone, but we definitely want to uh, strike companies and organizations while they're hot, while they want to give and want to be a part of the HBCU uh, adventure, legacy, all that good stuff. So, you guys, hopefully your development Athletics, everybody is making it happen in the connection with these companies and organizations. Uh, next, we have up, and it's actually quite a few, um, I guess a month or so away, is the HBCU All-Star Basketball Game. It's going to be here in Houston, Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023, at TSU's own HP&E Arena. So uh, that's going to be fun. You should check out HBCUAllStarGame.com for more information and uh, on how to purchase tickets. So I'm looking forward to all of these upcoming things. I'm excited about what has taken place in the past. Uh, just to keep you up to date, Shannon Sharp still has not given preview a formal apology, uh, apology on his ESPN show. Uh, so we're going to still wait on it. And y'all know Shannon Sharp or you're tweeting or on Instagram with him, tell him we're still waiting, sir. And while you at it, throw some money our way. Even though if you don't want to throw none to your alma mater, HBCU alma mater, we're always taking some money at Prairie View A&M University. Okie dokie. Well, uh, you guys. Hit me up on DG Sports ENT, all platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Let me know uh, your experiences. I want to apologize that I didn't get back with you on my live interviews last week at the baseball tournament. I just got caught up. It was just so exciting to uh, see the celebrities that uh, Thursday, although I've seen and met a lot of them before. But, um, you know, also my son and his two friends came with, and they had a very exciting time meeting people and just uh, enjoying the culture, you know, and, um, and enjoying the game because my son plays baseball. So it's just something, baseball, great sport to participate and watch. I know it gets a little boring, but actually the softball game on Thursday was pretty lively. As well as um, most of the games this past weekend, most of the baseball games, they were not really boring. They kind of went very quickly. So I, I was excited about that. Well, you guys, any opinions that I've made today are not uh, the opinions of DG and DG Sports and Entertainment, not those of the Mike Prince Show. I will see you later or talk to you later or hear you later. Uh, again, check me out at DG Sports ENT on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Signing off. Have a great one. We on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It's your girl. JJ, and I got Kennedy Heard with me from women's basketball. Senior guard, flash forward, combo. You know, she's very versatile on the 
on the court. Anyway, tell us about yourself and, uh, you know, like your major, where you're from, all that good stuff. Well, uh, my name is Cindy Hurd. I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. Like you said, I'm a senior here at PVAMU, and um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just happy that we're gonna be in swag play. I'm really excited for it. So, what you got planned now? Yeah, I know you guys had senior night the other night. Um, what you got planned for your senior uh, after you graduate and all that stuff? Uh, I've been looking to try and maybe go overseas. If not, I'm probably going to go into uh, speech pathology and work my way up from there or um, either that or be a pharmacist. You see, I'm still on the table for a lot of things. I don't know what I won't do quite yet, but those are really like the top three. You got options, though. You know what you, you got the right idea because you got the options. Yes, That's what's up. So how, um, how do you feel about, you know, the swag tournament coming up? You guys are coming around the home stretch. Um, how do you feel? How are you going to get the girls pumped up? And, like, what's the history, you know, behind it? Like, what does it mean to you, um, especially being at PV for all these four years? How how big is it for you guys, and what does it mean to you? Well, you know, I'm really excited for the black tournament. I feel like it's the best team that we, uh, that we didn't have since I've been here. Everybody works together well. We play together well. And uh, I'm excited to see what – what we will do in the game. I feel like I feel like we can win it, uh, you know. I think so, Sinky, and I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> like, like we're so solid, man. As, we're so as solid. long as as long as everybody stay healthy and y'all continue to play the way y'all play. I think you guys can bring it home as well. Yeah, that's like be... tournament is like it's like a reset almost. You know what I'm saying? We always looked at it back when I played. We always looked at it as like you know. We could be in last place in the regular season. That was never the case. But we could have been, and we would look at the swag tournament like we were still the best team in the conference. So at that at that moment, everybody record was zero to zero. So it was like you win or go home, and who wanted more was always going to come out on top. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, oh, man. I just, I just want to win at this point because uh, – we haven't. I haven't won the black tournament since I've been here, and I I don't want to experience personally for myself uh, the NCAA tournament because you'd be hopping it up like it's this and that is like for, for all the marbles basically, you know. So yeah, I'm I understand. I'm excited as well. I will be in attendance. You know, I'll be watching. I'm gonna be doing a play by play. I'm gonna be there. You guys got um an upcoming game this Saturday, right? Yes, against Alcorn. You got Alcorn, and then who you guys got on Monday? Jackson State. And, uh, oh, that's going to be a good one. You guys are the only ones to be Jackson State so far, You're right? In conference, right? Yes, ma'am. So we going in with that same gang, playing that same mindset. Have you guys talked a little bit about that and how you guys are going to, um, you know, execute this last go around before the ent- entrance into the SWAC tournament? Well, we just talk about right now, uh, we just want to get a good seating first off in the SWAC tournament. So right now we're just focused on one game at a time. For, right now we're focusing on Alcorn, how to uh, beat them. And, uh, and the next uh, on Sunday, we'll start talking about Jackson State and how to uh, and how to defeat them again. It's probably going to be the same, uh, the same game, game plan. plan. Yeah, probably a little tweaks here and there. But really, on this home stretch, these last three games that we have in conference play, we just need to we need to win out. That's what I'm talking about. Sound like you guys sound like you got it wrapped around your head uh, around that you gonna bring it home. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. I'm loving that mindset. I'm loving it. I want it so bad. I want it so bad. And that's all it takes right there. You got to want it. You got the right idea. So I just wanted to say thank you. I just wanted to touch bases with you and just, you know, tap in and let the people really hear from Kennedy Hurd and kind of let them get an idea of who Kennedy Hurd is off the court. So give me a rundown of, like, what your day-to-day lifestyle would be outside of basketball. Outside of basketball, my day-to-day. Okay, so... Is that on off days? Let's talk, let's talk about my off days. My off days, you know, uh, I'll, I'll probably go shopping. Yes, that would have a little shop with a little shopping spree, you know. Mm-hmm. Or and then after after I get done shopping, I go to work. I work at Longhorns. I'm a waitress, so. Okay. 
after that, I just come home and go to sleep and start the next day with my uh, basketball schedule. So I really don't do much on my off days. I really just chill or I go to work. So Okay. I need to start, I'll probably need to start going out some more now that I think about it. No, not during season. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Now, nah, but it, do you have any, you know, um, closing words or anything you'd like to say to any any players, any fans, any, you know, family you want to shout your parents out or anything like that? You will be able to send um, this link or find this interview on YouTube later after it's edited and things and put together. Um, so I'll, send, I'll shoot you guys the link once it's done. But you got any closing words? Well, the only thing I really have to say is that keep watching us, man. We are, um, we're excited. Uh, I know our fans are excited to see us as well. Just keep watching and keep supporting us. All right, Ken. Appreciate you, Mama. Uh, no problem, Coach. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome back to the SWAC Zone. We are fortunate to have on the line with us. you got to be one of the hardest working men throughout the Southwestern Athletic Conference. That's none other than Coach Byron Smith, head basketball coach of Prairie View Men's Basketball. How are you doing today, sir? Doing, doing well, Mike. Thanks for asking yourself. Yes, sir. I'm doing great, man. Um, uh, breathe a little bit better now that you guys are in somewhat better position as we come down the final stretch of this basketball season. Man, it's, it's been kind of adventurous, huh? Uh, to say the least. <laughs> well, uh, you're in position right now, and just like any other team and good program, you have to deal with unseen and hidden adversities and overcome that. Still uh, stay focused. Don't use it as a crutch, but more as a motivation for uh, being in position to make a, a difference in this upcoming tournament, man. Give us, bring us up to speed you know, how things have been going with you. Uh, you know, like everything, you know, Mike, I think uh, the good Lord didn't promise us heaven on earth. He promises heaven and heaven if we get there. Um, so there's always going to be, um, you know, obstacles and be adversity. But I think every team in the in the country is uh, dealing with some type of adversity, be it injury or off the court issue, academic issues. So uh, we're no different than anyone else. We just have to accept uh, the cards that we're dealt and do the best that we possibly can. The things that we can focus on each and every day is our attitude and our effort. Uh, and focus on the things that we can control. And that's what we're trying to do right now. It's been an adverse year. Obviously, we've had a ton of injuries, as everyone knows, if they paid any attention, uh, you know, to our season. Uh, ton of, ton of ish, a ton of injuries that at various times, uh, no point guard uh, for a large part of the season. Um, both point guards were out um, for six weeks at a time. Actually, uh, Trajan Wesley was out for longer than six weeks. Uh, Doc Nelson out for, for six weeks. So, we we just try to you know do it by committee, which was tough. And um, yeah, who's the roster was out for five weeks, you know, <laughs> you know who's our, uh, it's been pretty much our heart and soul. Um, Will Douglas missed a few games, so is is I've never dealt since I've been in Prairie, I've never uh, dealt with a year I had a year like this one, in terms of uh, you know just just not having a, a full complement of, of, of your players. Uh, we're doing better now uh, in terms of having everyone you know back together for the most part. Still missing uh, one or two guys. Um, but other than that, everything's been great. Well, <laughs> you know, when you go through your list, your laundry list that you just laid out, um, mm-hmm. and I've told you this off the record, and I'll say it uh, right now, I think this is one of your better jobs of coaching, knowing what you've had to deal with, and mm-hmm. uh, keeping this thing together. When you don't have the guys that you have a vision to be in those mm-hmm. key positions, it mm-hmm. creates an opportunity for some new stars to start shining. Not when I say star, a guy that says it's all about me, but guys kind of taking advantage of opportunities. Who would you say that it's been for this year's program? Well, you know, <clears throat> obviously, you know, Yahoo the Ross is new. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a new addition. I, I think he's been, when he's been up on the floor, he's been very, very, very impactful. Uh, uh, Ricky Doc Nelson. Uh, is, a, is, a, is a new player as well, but he's when he's been healthy, uh, he, he's been really good. I think as of late, um, Kyle Harding has really stepped up. He's been with us all of the season, and Braden Bell. Those two guys have kind of really stepped up um, and emerged and, and become uh, leaders for us here. Uh, you know, in the last you know few weeks of the season, Braden Bell, in particular this week, 
has really stepped up his game and his performance. But, but we kind of expected that from him. We thought it would come at a little bit of an earlier stage in the season. But like that old saying, Mike, better late than never. Um, we think that he will continue um, uh, to be solid for us as we move uh, into postseason play. Um, but Kyle Harding and Braden Bell, I would say, have, have, have been the ones that have really stepped up. Yes, sir. Now, you've been doing a lot of press and, and zone defensively throughout the course of this season. Is that predicated on what you're trying to eliminate from the opposing team or the best you feel comfortable as far as the, the players that you have since you had all the injuries? I think it's a combination of both, uh, Mike. You know, obviously in the past we haven't been much of a zone team. We've more, more you know, full court right, uh, right. pressuring and things like that. But, you know, I think you have to make the adjustments to the type of the makeup of your team. And uh, we, we just weren't able to um, get this team really to respond to that style of play of being more, you know, man-to-man and, uh, you know, 94 feet, getting up pressure and creating turnovers. It's been a bit of a challenge. Um, to the, in fact, for the past two years, Mike, it's been a bit of a challenge to get those guys to acclimate to playing that way. Um, so what we've done, we've tried to put them in positions where to take advantage of the attributes that they have, which is length, uh, you know, and so the zone, what we feel that it does is it, it's, uh, it, it kind of neutralizes, uh, you know, being able to be driven to the basket and, and, and spaced out and things of that nature. One thing that you give up when you play zone defense, obviously, is uh, the, the rebounding. Um, aspect of it can kind of come into play. You know, teams don't play a lot of zone. They feel like you're out of position to rebound. But uh, but I think we've done a pretty decent job with that. Uh, but, but more or less, it's the change in the style of play, Mike, has been more about personnel and, and how we're, uh, you know, how this team is constructed. Um, it's been pretty good to us for the most part. Um, we need to be better at it, continue to get better at it, and have everybody on board to be able to play the way that we want to play. And I think that would bode well for us moving down, uh, like I said, as we get closer into the postseason. No doubt about it. We're talking with Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. Getting ready for, I call it the, the Mississippi grind. Uh, you're going to be taking on Alcorn and uh, Jackson State. Now, it's no secret Landon Bussey um, was instrumental on the runs that were here at Prairie View. And it's almost like you created a monster coach and let him loose to go there at Alcorn. He's been doing a pretty decent job. It's going to be a tough task on Saturday, but I know um, it can be done. And this is me talking, not anyone else. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm looking for a split minimum on this road mm-hmm. trip to help, mm-hmm. you know, keep you in position. How do you see things in your forecast? I mean, I think any time, you know, when you're on the road, you, you always, you know, best case would be two wins, and that's what you strive for. But mm-hmm. I think it's successful if you, as you say, if you can get a split. And I, I definitely think that uh, I think both are attainable. Uh, you know, we're fighting uh, not only just to get in, but we just want to really, we really want to have a good seed, uh, you know, when we get in. Because I think, I really do believe, Mike, that if we're able to uh, get in and, and get our feet set, once we get into postseason, I think we're going to be, you know, a team that's going to be uh, really formidable. And not going to say dangerous, not going to say like other people, nobody's going to see you. I, I'm not that guy to do that. But I definitely think that we're going to pose a lot of challenges with the style of play and how we play with our experience. If we get an opportunity to get in there and get a good get our feet planted solidly, I think I think we can do some really good things uh, in, in, in the conference tournament and into and in the postseason as well. No doubt about it. You know, I've been speaking with people throughout the conference, and it, it happens and it speaks on how the conference has improved competition-wise. But who would have thought that a PV squad and a Texas Southern squad would be in the position that they're in, yet no one wants to see them guys coming in at the scene that they're projected to come in. And it's it's a, been a change in, of um, uh, styles and adjustment throughout the conference, huh? It, it has, and, you know, I think that's a testament to uh, just to everyone, you know, collective. The coaching is, you know, obviously really good now, really attracting um, – you know, I think even better players. I think the Southwest Athletic Conference has been underrated and always had good players, but I think even better players now with the uh, addition of the uh, and the option of the transfer portal. Um, I think personally, Mike, you know, if I can speak openly and honest, I mean, I, I think some of the shift with us, uh, we've had some help. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and it's been a bit of a um, – it's been tough, Mike, to be honest. You know, with the, 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 the changes here, in our administration and, and what has become um, – obviously, academics is, is important and paramount, and we take it very, very seriously. But with the adjustment 
and the changes that we've made over the past few years uh, to our academic requirements. It's, it's, it's been very difficult, uh, to be honest with you, Mike, to bring in the same type of players that I was able to bring in the, four year, the three or four years that we were pretty dominant. And I think if you're being fair, Mike Prince, I think you'd have to agree with that. Um, oh, I, I, I no doubt. Anybody, no doubt. I, I think I think anybody. And again, I, I'm I'm never. I've had too much success to ever make excuses. Uh, if I if it all ended for me today, I think I've done you guys well as a head basketball coach here. So I, I I don't need to make excuses, but I do need to be clear and I need to present the facts that you know we were not able to attract some of the guys. We have 11 grad transfers, Mike. And you think about that. I don't think anyone in the country has as many grad transfers as as Prairie View, and that's a lot. And it's tough to be able to build the continuity when you're changing rosters, you know, um, you know, every year. Bringing 9, 10, 11 new guys is pretty tough uh, from all walks of life and different systems and different playing styles. Uh, so I think the fact that we are where we are, uh, we've had to work really hard. It's been really tough. But you know what? Again, you you accept the cards that you dealt. And you make the best of the situation. You know you 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 know you take your situation and you you make the best of it. I think we've done that, and I do feel good about like where we are. I, I thought we would be a, a little bit better um, in terms of a record because we've been you know four or five games. Mike, it's been one possession, one or two points here and right. there. So right. it could easily be on the other side. So I think yeah, I'm proud of this group. We've been able to work together. We have to continue to do the best job that we possibly can as coaches to prepare these young men and just go out there with the guys that we have and not talk about who we don't have and what we don't have, but just focus on what we do have and make the best of that. And that's what we're going to do. No doubt about it. Now, when you spoke about the transfer portal, and we know that times have changed uh, tremendously with everything that's involved with athletics now, do you feel that there is more of a sense of urgency that you have to win right now versus uh, a more traditional way of, building a program through some freshmen and some blends of transfers and now the portal. So do you feel like that you have to lean toward that portal for that win right now status? Well, you know, I, I think the fact that we have won uh, and the fact that we want to continue to win, I think we have to pay attention to the portal because I do think experience um, does pay off. But I also think that it just depends on, you know, what the leadership wants. I mean, what's important to Purdue? you? I mean, I mean, what's important to people like yourself? You know, I, I lean on people like you, uh, trusted people, alums who've been here. You've been unbelievably supportive. You've got way more experience in Prairie View basketball than I. I mean, I lean on people like yourself. I mean, what's important? I lean on the AD. I lean on the president. Uh, what's important? I mean, do we want to uh, continue to, you know, win right now and win um, and, and, and kind of sometimes throw caution to the win? Or do I have time to have a bit of a reset? to show really the type of coach that I am that, hey, I've, I've won this thing three years in a row. We, we were dominant. We were 44-5 and five in three years of conference, 37-game home winning streak. I mean, it's hard to, to, to shake a stick at that, Mike, and, and, and make that out to be something that's light. That's not, that doesn't happen very often anywhere at any level, right? But, right. you know, am I going to get enough? Do I get the opportunity uh, from the leadership here to say, hey, you know what, Coach, we, we trust that, you know, whatever you see fit, you know, if you, if you want to try to continue to push this thing and try to win every year, uh, win a championship every year, or, hey, is it a situation where you, you kind of want to start to build this thing so we can have more longevity, go out and get, a, get some high school kids and, and get you three or four high school kids and build it, uh, you know, and, 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 and go that route. So it just it, it depends on, you know, what's expected. Um, and right now it's kind of tough to be able to be able to get that um, – <laughs> that word in my ear because we have some instability in our leadership here, uh, as you well know. Everyone knows. It's pretty well documented. Um, so I, I don't know. It's a tough question. Like, I, you know, when I get, a, when I get a, a permanent boss in here, I think I'll be able to better uh, explain uh, what it is that we're trying to do. But as, as a competitor, Mike, I want to win every game that I play against whomever I play against. And there is no easy nights. We're going to approach every game the same. If it's Duke, um, if it's Houston Tillerson, if it's, you know, Alcorn State, if it's Texas, I'm going to approach every game the same that we're trying to win because that, 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 that's why we do it, to win. To, to win. That, that's why we play this game. I am going to inject a programming note right here <laughs> after that comment. No, I'm the, and I have to. I did an episode this week okay. speaking of the very thing that you just mentioned. 
And I don't want anyone to think that this was rehearsed or anything like that. People that know me, Mike Prince, Mike Prince has always been a person that's going to speak it how he sees it and tell you how he gathered the facts knowing. And you summarize what one of my shows is about this past week. And I just want people to know that we did not go and plan this and compare notes. This is just right. how it goes here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. But with all that being said, we still have to focus, as you say, play the cards that have been dealt to you and, and make the most out of what you have. With mm-hmm. that being said, uh, you got to like your position right now. Uh, you got to like the camaraderie of what is seeming to be coming together at the right time of year uh, mm-hmm. with your program. And as you get on this road trip and you finish up, of course, with Texas Southern, um, mm-hmm. you, you're looking pretty good. Now, this is Mike Prince speaking. If the season were to start right now, and it looks like you would be matched up against Texas, not Texas, but Southern University, okay. on, a, on a neutral site, right. I like those chances. I like me those go. chances. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm, no, I'm just saying. So, um, we can't, like you said, we can't cry over spilt milk. You can only take care of what you can take care of. And when the mm-hmm. dust is settled, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I gave it everything that I have. Yes, sir. You know, Absolutely. so that's that's why we we appreciate you. That's why we support you, and that's why we're going to keep on appreciating you and supporting you as long as we can and have breath in our bodies, sir. And yes, sir. Uh, with that, with that, I think we need to go on and wrap this up before both of us get in any further trouble. You know, because <laughs> I can hear the ears burning right now. Oh my God! But you know, sure. you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You know. Yes. So with that, coach. I'm going to give you some closing thoughts, sir. Hey, as always, Mike, we appreciate you, uh, um, the support and uh, the coverage that, that we've gotten since I've been here. You've been very supportive, and uh, that, that that's not going to go fall on deaf ears and be forgotten. Uh, appreciate the support of the alumni. They show up, you know, win or lose, uh, winning streaks, you know, losing streaks. They still show up and they support a lot of familiar faces. The students have been great. The administration has been good. They show up and they support and they continue to give us what we need to be a functioning Division One program. So, you know, having said all that, um, I'm appreciative. Uh, we're in a purview in basketball. Men's basketball is in a good space. Um, we can only get better, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to push the envelope to try to put the best product out on the floor and give you guys something that you can be proud of. But definitely appreciate all the support, um, both near and far. Sounds very good, my friend. He is coach. Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers to get ready to take on Alcorn and Jackson State this weekend and wrap up with Texas Southern before they head to Birmingham, Alabama. And guess what? They will give you all of those games plus the tournament right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All you have to do is go to the website, obnradio.com, click on the Listen Live link, You'll be able to get every dribble, assist, dunk, free throw, foul, and <laughs> scores made right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The tournament starts March 8th through the 11th. I am going to exit stage left for right now. He is Byron Smith. I'm the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. And we'll see you on the other side.